we want to be just seasoning our words right. And you know, I love that this when I got to thinking about it, but nowadays, you know, they call someone salty, like, oh, oh, her, see her over there, she's salty. And salty describes that personality, right, that is bitter or angry, irritated and hard to take. And we definitely don't want to be salty, but we're going to have to deal with salty. We're going to come in contact with salty. That's what's going to happen. We always come in contact with different personality types. We're an earth full of different personalities and some people are salty and we're going to have to deal with that. And, you know, it's like a sandpaper personality a salty person is. And as Christians, we don't want to be the salty ones and we don't want to give the appearance of salty. And that's why we have to learn how to take our words and take our tone and watch our tone. Now, everything I preach, I want to say this point blank is for me first and nobody else. And I have a problem with my tone and I know this. And I, I, I'm going to give you a big example of this for a minute. But like when my mom says something, I have a tendency to snap at her and be like, I know mom. Okay, but that's not a right tone, right? I'm saying the right thing, but I'm saying it in the wrong tone. All I have to say is mom, I know. And see, see how different that is, mom, I know, versus I know mom, right? It's, it's a tone. And we have, we have a tendency to get a tone and not realize our tone. And God showed me this at Disney, and I kind of like, it, it wasn't what I was doing, and then he brought me back to it this morning, and I haven't even got to be on really Facebook, barely at all, because I've been sitting working on this, but we have to know our tone, and we don't want to be the sandpaper personality or have people think that that's who we are because of our tone. We want to be the salt of the earth, not the salty personality that's on the earth, right? But the salt of the earth. And I, my example that God gave me for this was the tribe of Ephraim. And so I want to look at that, and I want to go to Judges chapter 12, and it's going to be verse 1. And in chapter 12, verse 1, I want you to see what it says. It says, Then the men of Ephraim were summoned, and they crossed to Zaphon, and said to Jephthah, and I'm terrible at these words, so don't even judge me on those, Why did you cross over to fight against the sons of Ammon without calling us to go with you? You can see their attitude. We will burn your house down on you. Okay, so we can we can see right there what's coming out in them, right? They're having an attitude. They're being very salty. Okay, but in Judges 8 verses 1, we're looking at the same tribe. It's the tribe of Ephraim. Then the man of Ephraim said to him, What is this thing you have done to us, not calling us when you went to fight against Midian? And they contended with him vigorously. And who they was contending with was um, Gideon. You can go back and read the story. So... What do we see out of these two scriptures of the tribe of Ephraim, right? We see they are proud, self-centered, right? They're irritable, and they're a pair of white liver tremblers, right? And we're going to have to deal with those types of personalities in our walk with the Lord and in our walk in life. It's just a fact of nature. We're going to have to deal with all of those, right? And it said that they contended with him, right? And that word contended means to dispute or to quarrel, right? To fight. Also, to st I love this one, to strive in debate, right? Have you ever met someone that no matter what situation they're in, it's like they, you're like, they, you say when you walk away, you're like, my gosh, that one loves a good debate, right? They love to debate. Like, no matter what you say, they have to debate it. Like, we all know somebody or have come in contact with somebody like that, right? And that's how the tribe of Ephraim was. So, here we see what their personality is like, and now we're going to see the different ways that happens when we know our tone and know our way to say things, right? So we're going to go to Judges 12, and we're going to reread verse 1, but we're going to continue on to verse 4. So verse 1 says, The men of Ephraim gathered together and crossed over to Zephon. They said to Japheth, Why did you go to wage war with the Ammonites and not call us to go with you? We will burn down your house right on top of you, okay? So we see the tone that they're having. They're having this bad tone, right? And they're literally telling them, we're going to burn down your house for you not calling us to go with you. And Jephthah said to them, my people and I were in a very great conflict with the Ammonites. I called you, but you did not save me from their hands. When I saw that you were not going to save me, I took my life in my own hands and crossed over to the Ammonites. 
then the Lord gave them into my hands. Now, why have you come up to me today to wage war against me? Okay, so let's look at that for a minute. He's giving attitude back. He's coming at them with an attitude and he's debating them. And he's saying, you didn't do this, so I done that. And look at me, this is what I did. It's And he's coming across with this tone like, well, I had to take care of myself. So what happened? In verse 4 it says, that then Japheth assembled all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. The men of Gilead struck Ephraim down, for they had said, you Gileadites are fugitives in Ephraim, living in Ephraim and Manasseh. So he gave the tone that we have been talking about. He gave a tone and he gave an attitude and he gave an air, right? And what happened? He caused war. War actually come into his life, right? He was using unwise words. And not only do we have to know what tone we're speaking with, right? But we need to use wise words and wisdom on top of it. So we need to know what the wise response is, but we also need to really pay attention to what our tone is. Have you ever noticed that when you say something, it's like that person heard something totally different and they didn't understand you and you feel like you have to sit there and explain yourself? It's because sometimes it's because of the tone that is behind what you're saying. So if we look at uh, the similar situation back in Ephraim, and we go back to ver chapter 8, Judges chapter 8, verse 1 through 3, it says, Then the men of Ephraim said to him, which is Gideon, What have you done to us by not calling us to go and wage war against Midian? And they argued heatedly with him. Okay, so we see they're arguing with him right off the bat. They've come with an argumentative spirit, right? And he said to them, What have I done now compared to you? Are not the gleanings of the grapes of Ephraim better than the harvest of Abiezer? It was into your hands that God gave the Midianite commanders, Orab and Zeb. What was I able to do compared to you? When Gideon said this, their anger against him cooled down, right? Now, now I want you to pay attention to how he done that. Now, let's read his response just one more time so it can seep into our us. He said to them, what have I done now compared to you? Are not the gleanings of the grapes of Ephraim better than the harvest of Abiezer? It was into your hands that God gave the Midianite commanders Orab and Zeb. What was I able to do compared to you? So what is he doing? He's not caving into the cheap shot, right? They're taking cheap shots at him, but he's not throwing cheap shots back, right? He didn't blast back. Or throw a sleek at dig in. Travelers love to throw a sleek at, sleek at dig. And they love to, you know, gaslight somebody. And he's not doing any of those things, right? But instead, he done what Christ would have us do. He humbled himself and he used wise restraint. And he, instead of fighting back with them, he was like, look what you did do for this battle. This is what you done for this battle. You got Zeb and you got them and you captured them. And what was the outcome? The outcome was it says their anger cooled down, right? So he had a right tone and he didn't and he used wise words and the situation cooled down, right? There was no war, there was nothing else. But yet when we see the same pride in Judges chapter twelve with the unwise words and the tone behind them and the saltiness, we see what? It caused war. Proverbs fifteen verse one says a gentle answer turns away anger, but a harsh word stirs up wrath. I don't know how many times I've said in my lifetime, this is going to sound harsh, okay? And I, you guys have probably done it too. But, you know, we need to start realizing how we're saying things and our tone that's behind them because a little tone changes what people believe you're saying what you're doing, how the conversation carries on. It's uh, there a, a little tone says a lot. I remember we had a big, um, and Margaret could get on and verify this. I'll have to have her come leave a beautiful comment for you. We had a churchyard sale. And I looked at this woman and I told her, I said, oh, good morning. And she was like, good morning. So I, I laughed. I had to tease Margaret. And I said, oh, see, uh, go over to her stall over there. Her name's Margaret. And she would love to meet you. And I go, oh, Margaret, here's a friend for you. And this woman comes over to Margaret's little stall. And Margaret says, oh, hi, how are you today? And she goes, blessed. 
okay, well, does anybody believe that she was blessed? Like, she wasn't like, oh, thank you, Jesus, I'm blessed today. No, she was roaring like, okay, some kind of evil spirit. Nobody believed she was blessed because the tone behind it didn't say that she was blessed. The tone was saying otherwise. Like, have you ever seen even, okay, hi, how are you today? I'm fine. Okay, well, clearly you're not fine because there's way too much tone in there. If you was really fine, you'd be like, I'm fine. How are you? Our tone speaks measures to our attitude and what we're really feeling. We may be think we're saying the right thing and we might even actually be saying the right thing. But if our tone is wrong and we're out of tune, it comes out to the person we're speaking to and then we don't understand why we end up with a miscommunication. It's really not always about say, that we're saying the wrong thing, but it's what we're, the weight we're putting behind it, right? The tone that's behind it. So that's all that God gave me for today and we're going to go into this further and we're going to explore like the mouth and the right and wrong and doing like the right things, but and the wrong that comes with it, the right and wrong of some things over the next couple things. But you know, don't just weigh your words this week. Weigh your tone because a little tone changes everything. And like I said, this is for me first and I know I've rubbed people the wrong way in the past with like saying something with the wrong tone. But I also have noticed that I said, I had a situation with somebody not that long ago and I told somebody, I said, it wasn't what she said but it was the way she said it to me, right? And that's the proof. It's not always the way, what we're saying, but the way we said it. Jesus corrected. Jesus like flipped the table when they done it, but you know, Jesus had a very loving way about him. And like when Jesus told people to repent or anything else, he always, you can just imagine this like loving, graceful, seasoned with salt tone. And it's a great example to the way that we're supposed to be, right? Speaking gracefully to one another, right? Loving one another, seasoned with the right amount of salt, right? And I'm going to go back to that scripture and read it because I just felt led to read it one more time this morning. Let your speech, not somebody else's speech, you can't control what the person you're talking to is saying, right? But let your speech always be with grace. Always have grace with somebody when you're speaking to them. Seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So always know on how to answer somebody. You know, if we're spending time in the Lord and we're becoming mature, we can still fall into the trap of saying the right or wrong thing, but having the bad tone. Like it's it's a, a human thing. We have tones in our voices. So people, some people sing up here on the scale. Some people stand down here. But we have to begin to recognize with what tone we're speaking to people too and whether we're using right words or wrong words and because that really changes the situation like we see the difference like it says that it made the difference between one group having war and the other not having war right so that's what we want to be doing we want to be salting ourselves sprinkling it with love because it can be the most sapless thing that we say. And it can be something that's totally like even innocent, like not even about anything because we're not even having an argument. But if we have a nasty tone, right? Then when we have the nasty tone, it changes the whole conversation and the person may go home with a bad taste in their mouth and be like, listen, let me tell you about her. Let me tell you what they done. So just always knowing our tone and making sure that we're keeping a good, Christian tone keeping a loving tone right speaking the uh, speaking the way that we're supposed to speak but having a good tone behind it because if I tell my mom that I love her but I say like oh I love you she's not gonna believe it versus I love you there's a lot in a tone guys and when I look at you and I say I love you you know I mean it because you can feel the tone and the love and emotions behind it. And the emotions are always going to be there. So we have to learn how we're saying things to people. Like it's a blunder of our mouth, right? Things that shouldn't come out of our mouths. We talked about that a couple weeks ago about watching what words we speak. But now adding into that, watching our tone. Now we know sometimes that the enemy comes 
and the enemy takes our words and he twists them in the air and people don't hear what we really meant, right? But that's not always the case. A lot of times it says that it's our tone. And I'm gonna, I wanna read this to you real quick. It says here, the right way, a heart that is authentically regenerated and transformed will produce spiritual fruit in one's life. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law, but the wrong way. A heart that is not transformed remains under the authority of darkness and rebellion, is completely incapable of producing spiritual fruit in one's life. The Bible calls this state of the heart the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, adultery, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, and that's Galatians 5, 19 through 21. If we're using a negative tone when we're speaking with one another and somebody's picking up on our tone, it causes division, and when we're divided, we fall, but when we're, you know, when September 11th happened, they come out with the slogan, right? United we stand. And that's how we are in the Christian. We need to start watching our tone and start loving one another and seasoning everything with the proper amount of salt because united we stand, divided we fall, right? And if we're divided and we're arguing and we're having quarrels like the tribe of Ephraim was, then we're not advancing, right? But if we're united and we're talking to each other in love and we're speaking and we're learning how to speak properly to one another, then what are we doing? We're coming together for the goodness of God, right? And we've seen what happens when we're united. We've seen what happens when a church is united, when a family is united. Okay, how about when Facebook and the different religions is united? What happens? We move mountains. But when we let the enemy use our mouth, we become divided and we fall. So tone, just as important as our words is that we learned in a lesson a couple weeks ago, which all of our videos are pinned to the top of the page, our tone is important because our tone can give us away. We can smile and say we're good and we're great all we want, but our tone and our facial expressions is going to give us away. There's a lot in the tone of our voice, and we have to learn with what tone we're speaking with. So I'm going to close in prayer because that's all God gives me, and I'm going to be back on on Monday because Marianne had to reschedule. Lord, Father God, I thank you today, my Father God. I thank you, my Lord, that you've taught me this lesson over the last couple of weeks, my Lord, and that I'm willing to share it with other people today, my Father God. I pray that we would begin to recognize this week with which tone we're speaking, my Father God, that we wouldn't speak with a tone, my Father God, that would cause any kind of war or argument, my Father God, but we would begin to recognize the tone that we're speaking with and we would speak in a tone, my Father God, that is heavenly to your ears, my Lord that brings us together, my Father God, that unites us, my Father God. Atone, my Lord, that is worthy of you, my Father God. That's what I pray we'd begin to speak with, my Father God. I pray, my Lord, that even myself, my Father God, I've been so short-tempered and short with my tone and snappy, my Father God. But I pray, my Lord, that you would take that, my Father God, and you would help me to change that, my Father God, and you would help others to change that same situation, my Father God, that we would be pleasing unto you, my Father God. Atone tone that would be full of grace, my Father God, and sprinkled with some salt, my Father God, that we would not cause contentions with our tone, my Father God, but we would speak in a tone that's worthy of you today, my Father God, and I thank you, my Lord, and I praise you. Amen. I love every one of you.